So I was playing around a bit more with these two TPA dual TPA three one one six boards because I was going to make a video about this one. Uh, when I noticed there's something I absolutely overlooked in the first video about these, and that's that these have an absolutely horrible noise floor. Uh, if you put the volume to the middle, just have a listen to this. Now, I've got this little puny, uh, not very sensitive speaker connected across the output, and listen one, just listen to it uh, when I turn the volume to the middle. Even on this horribly unsensitive speaker and on my camera mic, I can see that it's registering qu quite significantly. Uh, and that's because the, we are having uh, about 4 millivolts of output noise. We are on the 10 millivolt full scale range, and uh, that's about minus 48 decibel volts. And that's just awful. That's absolutely horrible and unacceptable. Uh, so I started digging around into it and uh, reverse engineering this thing because I figured it's got a couple of op amps. This one's obviously connected as a buffer of some sort. Perhaps this one's just doing something weird. Uh, but no, that is not the case. When I've, I've done my reverse engineering notes and uh, while it is true that the first op amp is indeed just a buffer, basically it's connected straight after the main volume potentiometer, the volume potentiometer for the left and right channels just tap off before the op amp. So this first op amp has nothing to do uh, with the left and right channels, nothing whatsoever. Uh, instead the signal just goes straight to the left and right uh, potentiometer to an output cap and straight into the TPA3116. So left and right channels on this board are not buffered by an op amp, they are just going straight into the chip and uh, that, that really doesn't leave many sources of noise and this board is a bit weird in a way because these coils, they're getting warm just sitting with no load connected, no nothing no signal going through it, everything's running a bit warm so I started poking around and I think I might have pinpointed the cause of it because these TPA3116s have utility for synchronizing the clocks of several chips which are on the same board uh, in order to minimize the crosstalk. Uh, you can get all kinds of horrible uh, issues w if you have two free running clocks beating against each other. If they're not running exactly the same, uh, you can get some intermediate frequencies and stuff which uh, can cause some uh, bad stuff to happen. And the way you configure that is by setting different gain resistors. Uh, so it seems to be mostly just inverted. Uh, if you have a master set for 30 decibels of gain, you have 39 and 100k. Uh, but if you have a slave set for 32 decibels, you've got 100k and 39k. Uh, and uh, I had a look at that, and both of these chips are configured as masters. Uh, then I dug further onto the board, and uh, I did notice that the pins, it's the one right down in the corner there, uh, they are connected together for a one, uh, for a 10k resistor. But uh, with both chips being set to be masters, that's obviously not going to achieve anything. Uh, so I'm pretty certain that the gain resistors are those two little guys there. And I wonder if I swap those around, if a lot of this noise is not going to go away. Now, that, I don't think that's going to address the issue with the volume, with the volume affecting the noise floor. I think that's got to do with the fact that this is a 50k potentiometer. That's a very high value for a potentiometer in this uh, kind of an application. So, I figured we'd first try swapping the resistors around, and then try installing one of these 10k potentiometers in place of that one, and see if it makes a difference. Because really there is no other source of this noise than the potentiometer itself. And it's a known fact that if you have two relatively high value resistors uh, making a divider and you just amplify that a lot, uh, you're going to run into noise just emanating from the resistors themselves. So I'm, I think EV Blog made a long winded video about it. So I think I, I really can't see 
uh, much other reason for that to be. But uh, let's just try the resistors first, so back in a moment. Okay, I'll swap the resistors, so let's see if it makes a difference. Uh, it did make a difference, and uh, that's that the amplifier is now drawing a lot more current while it's being powered on. And that's coming out of those two chips. Hmm, that's odd. It was sitting at uh, 90 milliamps before. If I turn it on now, we're at uh, 170. Ah, and I tracked down the issue to this resistor there. Uh, that was connected between the two, synchronizing the inputs and outputs of the two chips. That's, uh, and as you should be able to see on the secondary camera, uh, it uh, was causing a giant voltage drop and uh, just corrupting the clock signal. So if we probe it again, that's looking a lot better. We now have a good 5 volt uh, TTL signal going there and we're not drawing any more giant current. And if we point the camera to the speaker again, we no longer have that horrible screeching noise. We still have the issue of the high noise floor, although it seems to have been partially remedied because we're sitting at uh, just about two and a half, three millivolts there. Of output noise, and I don't think I can make it worse. It spikes up when I touch the potentiometer since I'm coupled to ground. But yeah, doing that has decreased the amount of noise from uh, 4 millivolts to 2.6. So that's still not a very good result. So now I'm going to try and replace this potentiometer with a 10k one. Right, 50k out, 10k in. So let's see what difference that makes. Let's turn it up to the midway point and yep that is a difference uh, the noise is no longer going to show up on camera and uh, we've got uh, we're out of range that's 3 millivolts full scale 1 millivolt full scale so now we're sitting at just about 570 microvolts 570 microvolts or minus uh, 64.9 decibel volts, which is uh, way, way, way more acceptable than the minus 48. And if I turn that in either direction, it's just going to plummet down to almost nothing. And the best we're getting there, the volume is at the minimum, is uh, minus 74, which is uh, just fine. And if we turn it to maximum, yeah, it's mostly probably picking up some noise from the environment. If I turn down the main potentiometer, yeah, there we go. Same result, minus 74. It's just going to be picking up some noise from the all the wiring sitting in an unshielded uh, on my bench. So I would call that a fix. And uh, just to make sure you get it, here's how the speaker sounds. At its worst, it's just being entirely swamped by my uh, camera's uh, internal noise. So, that has done it. So, in order to fix one of these modules, you need to uh, swap places of those two resistors, that one and that one, and you need to replace that resistor with a jumper. And, of course, replace this potentiometer with a 10k one. You could probably make it ever so slightly better by replacing this one as well, but it doesn't have anything we're near as much of a deter detrimental effect, so this might actually be a lower value a potentiometer from the factory. And just out of curiosity, I desoldered it, and nope, it seems to be a 50k as well. There you go. And since I had it out anyway, I replaced it with a 10k as well, and uh, now if we have a look at uh, the meter, uh, setting the volume to any setting, even while I'm touching the board, uh, we're not moving out of, uh, we're not getting more than one millivolt of noise out of this thing. So that uh, did make a difference, it made a considerable difference. That's about as bad as it'll go. These are some pretty odd choices of uh, components I've got there. Probably due to Chinese incompetence more than anything else. 
Uh, so, yeah, before we wrap this up, let's just do a quick uh, distortion test to see if it's made any difference. And yes, uh, we're now putting it just about 20 watts per channel into 8 ohms. And uh, as you can see, we are on the 0.3% distortion full scale setting on the distortion meter. And we're getting about 0.15% rather than the... 1.2% or so, which we saw before doing these modifications to the board. Uh, so, yes, uh, the <laughs> this is an excellent result. Uh, the board has been fixed now. And if we switch over to the analog scope, uh, we still have the tendency of a kind of third order harmonic distortion going on. Uh, but keep in mind that this is on the 0.3% full scale range. So, if I were to swap it to the at 1% range we were using in the other video on the amplifier you can see that the distortion is massively decreased so this definitely is a fix it's still a bit curious that there's so much third order harmonic distortion but at least now it's well within manageable levels so there you go, that's how to turn one of these otherwise horribly distorting noisy pieces of uh, into an actual usable, uh, relatively hi fi audio amplifier. So, thank you for watching. I hope you found this somewhat interesting. Cheerio!